Okay, today we're going to start working on some tools. And we're going to start working on some tools for our electrical stuff. What we learned from doing the four blue box special that we've been doing for the last 100 days, what we learned from that was we need some more portable tools for testing track. The four blue box locomotives really put a strain on the operating system of the layout. And there's a lot of stuff. As you've seen in the videos, I've got push pins everywhere. Those are things that are marked as needing to be fixed or replaced. And we did a lot of testing. We found a lot of places and things that need to be replaced. And things need to be tested. And we need some testing tools. Now, you remember way back when we did this right here? World's greatest track cleaning car ever. It's a spotlight flat car that we added some weight to. And in DC, when this is on the track and you turn up power, light would light up. And we could run that over track and find out if the track was getting, if it was conductive. However, this will not work in DCC. Fortunately, to convert our greatest track cleaning power, our, our greatest track cleaning car, all we need to do is add a bridge rectifier. And then it will be suitable for both DC and DCC. So we're going to do that. Now, we're not going to do that right now, but we are going to convert this so we can use it in DCC and DC so it works for both and we will still have the greatest track cleaning car ever for both DC and DCC. Because remember, the best track cleaning stuff there is is elbow grease. All we need to know is where to put that elbow grease. This is what tells us where to go. So that's one tool. We're going to fix this up. We're going to do that. The other tool is, what we need is, we need a DC power pack with some indicator lights. And it's got to be portable. And we need kind of a long, a long power cord on it. So we can take it around somewhat portable. And we can do some stuff with it. So what we got here. This happens to be... I think this is a 1970s version of MRC Model 402 Ampac. Very simple. It only has AC and track. It does not have this fixed DC, which is for a remote control. This is just a straightforward one. It has two things. Basically, the AC was for the lights and stuff, and the DC for the track. And it puts out 16 volts for AC and it puts out 12 volts for trains. Simple, real stat, direction control, on off switch. It has an overload indicator but when I took it out of its box, guess what I found? There ain't nothing in there. So I don't know what kind of overload it could indicate because there ain't nothing in there that lights up. It's just a it's just a red knob. We'll get rid of that. And we can put a light in there. Here is the transformer. It's loose. We need to fix that. We're either going to do a new rivet or we're going to peen these rivets again. Here's the variable real strat. It's going to give a little cleaning. But then what we want to do, <clears throat> we really need some indicator lights on it. And we need a new cord. This cord here, I mean, this nothing really wrong with it one it ain't long enough so we want to make it longer but two it doesn't have a modern plug on the end it's got kind of a plug that i don't really don't really care for so we got this this costs like four bucks or something it's 12 feet long so just plain old lampshade laid a uh, extension cord and it's got this kind of plug on it which has got one big one and one little one so it plugs in the same way every time so we want to snip off this end and we want to add this cord onto this power pack. So we're going to do that. Then we'll have a brand new cord on there and it'll be much longer, making it better for portable work. That way we can take it around in various parts of the layout and, and use it to test things with all the power off. 
Now, for indicator lights, one of the things, I, I don't know if I'm going to use this or not, but this is one of these super duper headlight bulb LED. Right now it's at 3 volts. Check this out. I might turn it up. Check out this bulb. Turn it up. 3. Let's go ahead and you see it start to get brighter. 12 volts. It's, I don't know, you can't probably see this on the camera, but to me, I can't look straight at it. It's really, it's really bright. Let me turn it down. Let me get down here at 3 volts. And it gets really soft again. So it definitely has some variable brightness. And that'd be kind of cool because we got a whole bunch of these. But maybe it might be something else. It could be any other light. But I'm thinking we're going to add some lights up here. We're going to add a power indicator light that tells us if the power is on or off. And we're going to add another light that tells us by brightness how much power we're applying. There's also the possibility of adding some direction lights, telling us which direction is which. So, now, let's zoom out again. A long time ago, I once told you of things that you should have on hand. One of them was this book, How to Wire Your Model Railroad. You find these at the train shows, like, for a dollar. Lynn Westcott... Lynn Westcott wrote this book, and this thing is 1950. And although it's mo it is for DC only, it has some things in here that you cannot beat as far as electrical stuff goes. And this is one of them. Let me set it over here, and then let's, let's take a look at the page. Okay. Here, let's have you look at this. Zoom in on it so you can see. All right. This right here is a very important page. This shows the basic... This is a really nice drawing of how a DC power pack is laid out and how it works. And even if you're DCC, when you are building track work, especially if you handle track work, a DC power pack for testing is a lifesaver. Tells you if you did good. Because if you remember right, all track in DCC has got to be straight DC. That means if you flip a switch, you're not changing the power at all. In this book here, this book covers a lot of using common, common ground and what they call power routing which we don't do anymore when we're wiring our layouts because we want to make sure, even if we're not going to do it, we want it to be DCC compatible in case we change our mind. But having a power pack with a bunch of things on it that helps us troubleshoot is a very good thing to have. And here it is, the transformer, the power plug, the on-off switch, all the things, including some meters. I actually have the, an ammeter and a voltmeter, I'm not going to add them to this power supply. We're going to save that for when we do the auto pulse. I've got a great big auto pulse transformer that uh, has not seen any use. I got it basically unused. And they're notorious for crapping out, basically because of the design of the case. We're going to address that and fix it. But for this one, I've got these little fans here too. Here's some computer fans. I'm thinking of adding a fan to the box. There's the box right there. I'm thinking of adding a fan to the box. On momentum power packs like the Auto Pulse, the fan would have saved a ton of problems. But they didn't have those fans back then. And a lot of those overheated because the momentum the momentum overheated and ruined a bunch of crap and then you would lose it lose an entire side of it which is too bad but we're going to see if we can't upgrade that anyways this shows us where all the wiring goes and using some bridge rectifiers we should be able to add some indicator lights add a new power cord that's longer which would be a good thing and then it 
it lets us know what does what and what goes where. The one we're using, this Model 402, is as simple, it is not even as complicated as this right here. So we're going to be able to do a whole bunch of cool things and make this a nice portable tester. And we're going to have some good power supply. Then we'll make some cords with some alligator clips. And that's, our, that's the idea for this. So that's where we're going to go with it.